Welcome to How to Be a Money Magpie, the podcast from moneymagpie.com, sponsored by the pension provider PensionBee. I'm Jasmine Bertles, the founder of Money Magpie, and this podcast series looks at all sorts of aspects of money, from freebies to investing, and from holiday tips to ways to set up a business on the side. We've been looking at different aspects of pensions in the last few weeks, and today we're looking at the crunch moment for anyone with a pension, that time when you start to actually use it, live off it, allow it effectively to pay you a salary. So the question is, what do you do when you actually come to retire? What are the rules? What should you look out for? What benefits are awaiting you? And to help us answer these questions, I'm thrilled to say that we have Baroness Ros Altman, a campaigner for fairness in pensions, who helped to establish the Pensions Protection Fund and has twice been voted Pensions Personality of the Year. And that's just for starters. So, Ros, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Pleasure, Jasmine. Lovely to be here. So, Roz, let's start with, with having a look at the decisions that people need to make when they're coming up to retirement, which is financially a really important point in someone's life, I think. What are the main issues that people need to think about? Well, absolutely, this is an important moment. Uh, and it can be a defining moment, of course, for many people in their lives. But what I would like to stress before we go any further is that it is very important to separate the idea of pensions from the idea of retirement. And a lot of people become very confused when they hear that they are coming up to a pension age that they may have chosen a few decades ago and their scheme pension age might be 55 or 60 or even 65. And they may still be working. Mm. So your pension is meant to be there for you when you're not working or to supplement you if you're, let's say, moving to work part time. If you really don't need the extra income from your pension, there are huge benefits to leaving the money alone, paying more in and ultimately then having a lot more when you really do need your pension money. So that's my first message. Mm -hmm. Do you really want to stop paying into pensions with all the advantages and free money that goes along with that? And if you don't need to take all your money out, I would say if you've got more than one pension, perhaps leave one or two alone and take some money out of one. You may want to just take the tax-free cash for now and leave the rest invested. So this is just great that you, there's so much flexibility. You could take some of it out, carry on working, put some more back in. That's amazing. Absolutely. And you get extra money building up for you for later in life. You know, the, the idea of a pension isn't just to have spending money in your 50s and 60s when you might not need it. If you need it, obviously, of course it's there. But ideally, it's to help you into your 70s, 80s and 90s when you're very unlikely to still be working, you're likely to have used up any other savings that you have. And then if you take money from your pension, you're less likely to be taxed highly on it. If you, were, if, if you take, let's say, 10,000 pounds a year out of your pension to supplement your state pension, you'll pay very little tax on that. Absolutely. So let's just have a think about the state pension, which you, you mentioned earlier. So right now, as you say, you can draw your state pension at 66, but I think you actually have to apply for it, don't you? you don't, it doesn't automatically just plop into your, into your bank account. Yes, uh, you can claim your state pension online. It's something that I put in when I was minister and it, it is supposed to work uh, seamlessly. You should get some communication from the DWP that you're coming up to state pension age, what would you like to do? But even if you do get that, you still have to then respond and claim the state pension or let them know that you want to defer it mm -hmm. is also an option. If you do want to claim your state pension now, then 
you fill in the forms or the online forms and your pension should start on the day that you uh, reach your state pension age, which at the moment is your 66th birthday. So whatever is the closest payday to that, yeah. you should start getting your pension. And is it really, is it worth deferring? Because I rather like the idea of deferring. I mean, as you say, a lot of people continue to work. They're, they're strong, they're healthy. And if you don't need it, are you going to get quite a lot more when you do finally take it out? Well, the deal for delaying the state pension is much, much less generous now since 2016 with the new state pension system than it was under the old system. What you need to factor in is how long you think you're going to live. If you're in very poor health, it's probably not such a good idea mm -hmm. to defer. Even if you're still working, the uh, benefits that are available to you don't pass on to the next generation like a private pension can do if you haven't taken the money. Your spouse or partner may inherit some of your state pension but if you don't think that you have many years left to live, I would say that's a factor in suggesting that even though you can get an extra 4.8% a year on top of the state pension you've built up by state pension age, that has to be offset by the fact that you won't have had any money at all for the time before which you actually start claiming it. However, you also need to factor in tax because if you're in a high tax bracket, then you will still lose some of your state pension in tax. And once more, if you have a normal life expectancy and you're hoping that, you know, there's no reason why you, you shouldn't live, you know, in, into your 80s, say, which is quite normal, yeah. then delaying the pension until a period where let's say you're no longer earning therefore you're no longer paying higher rate tax might be worthwhile mm -hmm. i would say that decision is pretty complicated and should be taken with the help of some kind of financial advice well yes it's a, it's a very good point because you know the, i think coming up to retirement wondering about all these things like state pension what you're going to do with your private pensions etc that seems to me to be a time when it's really worth paying for financial advice. So where would you suggest people go to find the right financial advisor? Because there are an awful lot of them. They're not all brilliant. So you know, where, how can you get one that's going to be good for you? Ideally, you really want someone who is totally independent, can look at the whole circumstances that you're in and also the whole of the market to find out what would be best for you? That will cost you probably a couple of thousand pounds. It could be less depending on what your circumstances are and who you manage to find in your local area. But it is really important to make sure that you're getting advice from somebody who is on your side, not their own side. That a good place to start with just answering basic questions and getting all your information together could be, if you're over 50, to call the PensionWise service. The government has set up a free independent service that will help you understand pension decisions. It won't guide you to make the right decision in terms of telling you what you should do, but it will give you the parameters to consider and the factors that you need to take account of and the risks that you might face. Mm, excellent. And then uh, actually something that we often suggest at, at Money Magpie um, is um, you know, going online. There are some comparison sites. There's, there's unbiased.co.uk, which, which can help. And um, vouched for, I think vouchedfor.com yeah. is particularly helpful because they've got reviews of financial advisors. So that's quite a useful place to go. The best route for a really good financial advisor is usually word of mouth. But it is also important to say that financial advice and the uh, work that you do with a financial advisor has quite a bit to do with chemistry as well. And that you can usually gauge 
by meeting someone for the first time, financial advisors don't usually charge you for an initial meeting anyway. True. So that's a way in which you can maybe meet two or three and see whom you feel comfortable with. Good idea. Yes, very good point, because I'd forgotten that the first meeting is free. So you can get all sorts of potentially free advice by going to see a few. And as you say, once you've got, you know, you click with somebody, um, it's a it is a, it's a very good point. And one of the things, of course, that a financial advisor can help you with is is knowing how much you're going to need on a, a monthly basis, because I think a lot of people don't. And um, you know, you, you've mentioned about the, the, the bad idea, really, for m most people, I would say, of taking their private pension early. But how much do you think you should really honestly have in your pension pot, in your private pension and, and investments generally, to, that, that will be enough to give you a decent income on top of the, the state pension? That is an impossible question to answer. Honestly, Jasmine, it totally depends on what spending needs you think you will have, what other income might be available to you from elsewhere, whether you're thinking of downsizing your house and maybe uh, having some extra money from there. So I don't think there is a general rule that you can use to say, this is enough mm. or this isn't enough. Obviously at extremes, it's quite easy to suggest that, you know, if you've got a few hundred pounds or even a few thousand pounds in your pension fund, that's unlikely to be enough to see you through a long retirement. Mm. Mm. But conversely, if you have a million or more in your pension and you have a very expensive lifestyle and no other money, you might actually end up being disappointed with the way your pension supports you. It's very hard to know. Yes, yes, very good. And so this is as you know where you need a financial advisor really to do right. And particularly, I, I would think early on, I mean, when you're about 50, to, yes. to say, right, this is how much you've got, not nearly enough for the kind of lifestyle you're wanting, you're gonna have to put loads more, you know, that, so, so then you get an idea, I guess. Either that, or, you know, this is the kind of lifestyle you can afford. You know, I'm, I'm very conscious that all too often and almost always when people talk about your pension, they always say you haven't got enough. Yes. You know, the, the message is always a negative one, a, yeah. a, a kind of wagging your finger one. And I don't think people respond very well to that. My idea about pensions is you've got a pension. That is great. Now, let's see what you can do with it if you want to build on it or if you just think well I've got other money elsewhere don't just automatically say as soon as you see any money in a pension oh that's not enough you need to do more some people can and some people can't some people will and some people need to perhaps be encouraged a bit to understand why they should mm -hmm. you see so many negative stories about pensions which upset me a lot because actually they forget all the free money that's gone into the pension. Let's say, you know, a fund doesn't perform brilliantly. Well, you've doubled your money on day one if you're in a workplace scheme, at least. So yeah. yes. these things are part of the picture to make a plan. It is, as you say, vital that what people do is plan ahead for the kind of spending they might want or be able to afford so they can adjust their expectations or adjust their savings. Because it's really important to be able to plan from a period where you can't just take money out of your pension and think, oh, well, that's it. Ahead for how much extra work might I want to do, whether it's part time, how much extra income might I need if I want to have a lifestyle of supporting, let's say, three holidays a year, if I'm happy with one holiday, what would that mean in terms of how much extra money I might require from now on if it was about uh, going out and spending lots of money on, on gifts or on entertainment or, or on dining out, all of those can be factored into a financial plan. But if you don't make a plan, as I say very often, if you fail to plan, you're planning to fail because you won't have a clue 
what to do with your money or how to plan the lifestyle that might be your favorite option or the most realistic option for you. Yeah, we're, so we're talking particularly there about um, people thinking about how much money they're going to need, which may mean in many cases that you carry on doing a little bit of work, just, you know, a bit of a, have a bit of a side earner maybe. Really important, really important. You know, nowadays people are living, thank goodness, much longer and healthier lives. Not everyone, but the majority of people are able to do some part-time work Partly also because work itself is physically less demanding. So, you know, you may have to change career if, if you are in a very heavy manual labor job, but that doesn't mean you can't do anything. Absolutely. And the other thing, of course, when you come to take your pension, you know, and of course the word pension means various different things. It's what you put your money into when you're working and then it's what you take out when, when you're not working. Um, so when you come to take it out, um, th there are all sorts of options now, uh, which can be quite confusing in a way as to how you can have your pension. I mean, it used to be that basically you had an annuity, you could buy an annuity and that was pretty much it. But now there are various options. What, what do you think people should be thinking of when it comes to these different things that they could do with their private pension? Again, I think the first question you need to ask yourself is, do I actually need to take money out at all? But if you do need to take money, plan it carefully, because if you take too much in any one year, you can bump yourself up into a much higher tax bracket and lose much more than you should in tax, if you spread the withdrawals over a longer time, then again, you can mitigate the tax effects. And if you are careful with your planning and you time your withdrawals relative to your other income, you can pay little or no tax on the pension when you take it out. But the most important thing is now that you don't have to buy an annuity, there are more complex decisions about how much you might want or need to take out each year. And in that, there are very much fewer product options or solutions available yet. But I think a rough rule of thumb that people have often said could be used and is backed up by some academic evidence is if your pension fund is, let's say a hundred thousand pounds, perhaps the safe amount to withdraw is 4% a year. Now, if your fund stays at a hundred thousand, that would be 4%, 4,000 pounds. If your fund grows over time, your income from the fund can increase. If there's a year in which markets have done pretty poorly uh, and your fund has shrunk a bit, then you might want to take a bit less. But the idea is that you don't end up running out of money when you're in your 80s and 90s and you've got nothing else to live on. That's so helpful. And if, if people, you know, finally, if, if people are still worried about getting it right at re retirement, are there other places they can go to for advice? Well, the word advice is a difficult one. You can get free guidance and you can get guidance and help, which sometimes is called advice from your pension provider's helpline. But actually what you need is independent advice to help you understand what is best for you. If you can't access that, I would say one of the best things to do is use some of the websites with modelers that you can access easily online. Uh, and that would help you try and make your own plan by feeding in various bits of information. There are um, websites that you can use to help you plan your spending, understand how much you might want or need to spend. There are expenses that people tend to forget about uh, when they're making 
a plan themselves. And these can prompt you with reminders of things, you know, don't forget your insurance costs, don't forget your TV licenses, don't forget needing money to maybe treat grandchildren, whatever it is, mm -hmm. things that you might have overlooked, you can then build into a proper plan that's more comprehensive. That's excellent. Thank you so much, Ros, for all that really helpful advice as ever. And of course, we do have a lot of information on Money Magpie for anyone retiring or on their way to retirement. I'm Jasmine Bertels and my guest today was Baroness Ros Altman. Her Twitter is Ros Altman and her website is rosaltman.com. And the producer was Jenny Bertels. Thank you.